the General Secretary of FAI, Susanne Schöbel, please. I'm really pleased here to be here for the first time uh, at the plenary meeting of the Aerobatics Commission. And um, first of all, I would really like to say that I appreciate uh, all your volunteer activities because you make the events possible and you make the aerobatics uh, possible. So without you, no events and no activities. So thank you very much for that. Um, a few words shortly on my background. Uh, I studied political science and I worked in the public sector and non-profit management before I came to FAI. So that's the expertise, especially working with volunteers and uh, having a non-profit organization um, in a responsible position. That's what I, what I can bring into FAI. And the second thing is um, I was member of the national team in gliding in Germany for 10 years. Um, I uh, got my license in gliding in uh, 1997 and uh, worked on getting the Silver Sea, the Gold Sea with three diamonds and uh, some diplomas. So uh, also participated in world championships and I'm a twice world champion in gliding of women in 50 meter class. So that was my connection with FAI that I could bring into it. And uh, I really appreciated when the decision was made that they would like to have me in, uh, here as Secretary General. So um, I think both of it, the experience in air sports, um, I have a power plane license as well as well as the professional experience hopefully uh, will bring the FAI to a new level. And uh, as you know, I joined in March and uh, two weeks later Markus Hagen and I joined. Um, he has his own experience in air sports in ballooning mainly. Um, he will make the second part of this presentation because we would really like to show that all our activities from the head office together with you and together with the members go hand in hand and that there is some concept behind it to bring more visibility to air sports and to help FAI uh, actually to survive, if you really want to say it strongly. What I will do now is um, give you an overview of our, our activities from the uh, Secretary General's point of view, um, who is, according to the statutes, the Managing Director of FAI, and it's based on the framework set by the statutes and the bylaws. So I will cover some topics. I would like to say a few words on the head office focus because I understand that uh, some of you are closer to our activities and uh, some of you are less, so it makes sense to introduce uh, some of our topics to you. I will say a few words about air sports development, about membership development, about uh, international relations and finally about the general conference results. Um, I, I suppose that uh, LG will say additional words on that, but I really would like to stress two important points that are relevant for you as an Air Sports Commission and especially as Aerobatics Commission. In the second part, Markus will then mainly talk about marketing and communications. Um, so you see the, the rationale behind all of what we do is not only to organize successful world and continental championships, and to ratify world and continental records, but also to promote air sports. That's really the motto behind the activities, promote air sports and raise the visibility. So first on the focus of the head office, um, please be aware if you look at the next slide, that's the structure of the head office at the moment. Um, it is something that we are still reviewing because as a matter of fact, everyone is involved in different topics, even if, for example, Annik Hauser as assistant to the sports um, uh, director is also um, or working with the commissions, but she's also involved in other work together with the executive board. So it's all interconnected and please consider this as the team that is working for you. So we are there to support you, we are there to give advice also, and we are there if problems occur to help finding a solution. And um, it is that's something I'm new, so I can say it next year. I would not uh, do this uh, little excursion. It is set by the framework of the statutes and the bylaws. So if we see the next slide, um, if you just continue, there are defined um, secretariat purposes um, in the statutes. So controlling the FAI business plan, uh, doing the annual report on air sports development, and support for FAI awards and diploma. Next. Generally, the help with the commission procedures. That's a key element of our activities in the head office. Help the commissions and 
surely we are a complex organization because we have 11 air sport commissions. If you look at other international sports federations, they have a very simple organization considered to what FAI is doing, uh, which is sometimes maybe considered to be difficult. On the other side, it's maybe a positive asset to say we have a, a diverse structure, we have very different characters in all air sports, but if you bring that all together, we are a much more interesting international sports federation than those just doing fencing, for example. Further purposes are really maintaining the archives of FAI. And uh, one of the most impressive things for me being for the first visit in the head office was looking into the archives of FAI. We have documentations of balloon flights from the 19th century in our archives. We have the record file from the flight from Charles Lindbergh in our archives. We have all the documentations from the cosmonautic uh, activities of the former Soviet Union it, with original pictures and original signatures. So that's uh, really something very worthwhile that we should always keep in mind that we have that. Homologating airspace records, air and space records, um, maintaining the accounts and collecting all payments. I will show a slide on that uh, just quickly after that. Maintain the electronic communication with all of uh, the bodies within FAI and the air sports community at large. Next one. So publishing all activities, you know that uh, whenever you have had a meeting, the minutes will be published on the website. Whenever you are planning a meeting, for example, the bulletins and the agendas will be published. So that's all work done by the head office. Next one. And um, further activities. I, I suppose you cannot really read it. Yeah. Can you read that? Only if you have good eyesight. Okay, good. Continue, please. <laughs> Next one. This uh, is <laughs> 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 I didn't want to put it so you can read it. I will explain it to you what it is. I just talked about sanction fees. Each, each um, area like this is representing one commission and it's the working document for the head office to understand the procedures of each commission on sanction fees, deposits, um, performance bonds, whatever. So what you can see only from the outline, there are different procedures for each commission. And surely we could now say, let's find one solution, one size fits all, but I think this is not really possible because each air sport has a different concept of running the events. But just to give you an impression, that's what is our daily work uh, for each commission to take care that their processes are working. Next slide. That's uh, in just the uh, impression of how many medals are processed through the head office to all the events where medals from FAI are handed out. Next one, please. And you see the numbers, the total numbers of sets, which is uh, gold, silver, and bronze medals on the left. So we have 177 uh, big medals and 281 medal sets, uh, smaller ones, and nearly 3,000 diplomas to take care from the head office to be sent out to each organizer in communication with each commission. And uh, there is just a quick overview over the changes over the last years, what was introduced from different commissions, and we really adjust to the needs and wishes of each commission. Next one. And badges and certificates. Uh, you see that some of the commissions, SIVA is not on here. You don't need to invent anything that we add another column here. Huh? <laughs> if you wish to, we do it, but uh, just that's already some ongoing stuff. We have, for example, proficiency cards for the hang gliding and paragliding. We have um, um, certificates of proficiency for the parachuting and we have World Cup medals from SIAM, so lots of things going on. Next one. And that is the overall development of events. Category 1 events since 2000 for all commissions. And what you can see overall is that the numbers are increasing. So you can consider politically, is this a good development or is it not? doesn't make it everything too complex if you talk to people and you tell them we have about 60 category one events like World and Continental Championships to people outside of air sports, they look at it with a question mark on their face and saying, okay, what, what are you doing? <coughs> on the other hand, it's giving opportunities to practice air sports on the highest level, so it needs to be balanced. Next one, please.
for the Airsport development, a review of what has happened in 2013. We had uh, 50 Category 1 events um, in 19 different countries. Uh, still, the focus is on Europe, so 13 events in Europe and other events in other regions of the world. We have 69 FAI members participating in CAT1 events with a total of about 3,000 competitors. And results received in the head office was really on the same day the competition was finished and the longest took 56 days until we had the results. I just would like to stress that. Please take care of sending us the results from the events um, at really as soon as possible. We will publish them on our website. So as long as it's not published, nobody knows who is the new world champion or who is the new continental champion. We had 232 international records ratified in the head office last year, 87% of them being world records, so that's a sign of what has happened since the continental records were introduced. The numbers are increasing and more activities to report about. So that was the purpose and it has been reached. I would just like to say a few words on the organizer agreement. Um, you all know that this is a hot topic ongoing for many years already. We are well aware that the current document is really not the best, but um, Markus will say a few words on that. We have now drafted a new document, new organizer agreement, which is much more in favor <coughs> of telling all parties involved of what a world championship or continental championship is about. And really to give it as a help document and not as imposing restrictions and regulations and uh, saying that we have one core document with appendices who, that can be adjusted to the need of each local organizer. And additionally, what will happen at the beginning of next year is an, an organizer seminar, so we invite organizers, experienced ones and newbies, and we invite the commissions and the members to come to Lausanne for a two and a half day a seminar and to actually, first of all, have a joint understanding what is the goal and objective of such an event, what is the FAI doing, how can we support you, um, how can we make this a better event or an improved event. So ex it's experience sharing, but it's also developing um, our sanctioned events around the world. Next one, please. The organizer seminar is also part of our um, strategy of raising visibility for air sports. As I mentioned, promote air sports is one of our key to-dos that we have every day. This, uh, this is a graphic from a study made in 2011 for FAI on marketing. How can mark FAI market its air sports? And this is just a very simple recipe that you can also keep in your mind for each activity that you do. We need to develop a high-profile event, and if we have it, we need to attract spectators. And that will cause media coverage, and that will make it easier to find sponsors. So that's really the very, not uh, vicious circle, but virtuous circle of developing FAI, because one fact is clear, we also need to find additional sponsors. We have Breitling, we have the cooperation with the Red Bull Air Race, but still we need to work on that. So the organizer seminar is also part of what we try to do. And um, making air sports more visible, one additional activity is the expert group New Technology. We have kind of relaunched that and we already yesterday had some talks with, uh, with John and with some of you about the activities to make the event visible, more visible than it was in the past, and the technologies that you can use. So I really ask to connect also with the expert group so we make it a joint effort, we don't reinvent the wheel but we see how we can do some coverage that is usable for TV. I will get back to that a moment later because we have very interesting things happening at the moment. Next one, please. Short view on our membership. Membership is the national air sport controls, uh, either multi-sport or sometimes also single sport. So we have active members 87 at the moment, associate members 15 and a total with temporary and international affiliate members of 114. What we see at the moment is that air sports are developing in different regions of the world and the self-organization of air sports is really changing. Some of the classical national air sport controls are experiencing changes, uh, transitions, um, endangerments from outside um, developments. So we really see we need to be 
aware of the existing structures and the uh, developments that take place because sometimes even the distribution of sporting powers are questioned. And uh, when we are in the FAI head office, we need to clarify, is this national air sport control that is saying we have the control in our country really the one that's having it? So what does the sports minister say? What does the National Olympic Committee say? And so on. So I guess that the membership of FAI will expand. It will change and it will expand in the near future. Next one, please. So a few words on international relations because that's also something important and a task for the head office that you are not really seeing in your everyday work, but that's important. Um, we had a meeting with the IOC, um, with the President Thomas Bach in June. And uh, if you click once more, you see that there is an Olympic TV channel planned. Uh, some of the uh, TV is already in place. The key message that Thomas Bach gave us, this Olympic TV channel will be open to non-Olympic sports as well. It might be that it's broadcasted in the morning at 3 o'clock on European time, but does that matter? It doesn't really matter. The main thing is that we are online and that we are visible. And we explained to Thomas Bach, look, Air sports is already somehow in the Olympic program. The Queen and James Bond parachuted for the London 2012 Olympic Games. And he looked at us and said, yeah, yeah, you're right. And this, we showed our promotional video, you know, the three minute video um, uh, uh, showing the air sports to him. And uh, first of all, he said, ah, I don't like flying. I always send my wife to flying because she, I'm not feeling comfortable with the altitude. So, the video starts and you know the first thing shown is glider aerobatics and then he said, oh, I've done that with Helmut Reichmann in Germany. And then the next thing shown, he said, oh, I've seen that, oh, I've done that. So we were really surprised that he has a connection to air sports, which is something to consider and, and to really work on and keep it boiling in a way. <coughs> um, currently, or next week, we will have another meeting with the sports department of the IOC. Um, it will be a long way to get air sports into the Olympic program, but they have kind of opened themselves. They are now discussing about the Olympic <coughs> Agenda 2020, um, discussing about new sports being integrated and, for example, shown in the sports lab, in the so-called sports lab. So what we will talk about next week is what can we show at the Youth Winter Olympic Games. So that's the most difficult topic and problem that they can pose on us, I think finding people under 18 practicing air sports and snow, on snow and ice. Well, anyhow, we will show something to them and uh, we will keep on going with the discussion because secondly, in the Asian region, there are strong activities from our uh, members there to connect and to bring air sports into the statutes, for example, and the program of those games that are taking place under the regime of the Olympic Council of Asia. So we have the Asian Beach Games, Air Sports is already in there. We have the Southeast Asian Games, Air Sports is already in there. And we have the Asian Games. And then, as the biggest event, the Olympic Games in Tokyo in 2020. So there is a joint effort from the Asian region to bring it in there. And I think it's a good approach to say we do it from two sides. Next slide. That's the International World Games Association. I will say a few words on uh, Wroclaw. You see the World Games 2017 here, but also important, the World Games channel. Same development like in the IOC. There is a platform where we can send materials and they will be broadcasted there. And they are asking for materials, so we need to reinforce our activities there. And for sure, the World Games here in Wroclaw, there is some discussion I heard about the location and the timing, and I think most of the people coming here next week for the meeting, for the technical meeting on the World Games preparation is that they, they know their sports. They know handball, they know volleyball and so on. But I think most of them don't really know what is air sports as a competition. So it is an opportunity to meet and say, if we have time, we show something about our air sports, maybe just the three minute promotional video. So. They, they see it and they see not only the competitive part, but they also see the entertaining part of it. And we need to take care that this air sport event within the World Games is not taking place somewhere hidden on a location where no one is coming, but that it's really part of an event together with the competition. And uh, that's something I really would like to point out. And from the head office, we are really supporting the, the Polish Aero Club as well as the Aerobatics Commission as well 
as everyone involved here on the spot, really as good as we can to give advice and to support a good esports event as part of the World Games. Next one. Sport Accord is the kind of union of the International Sports Federations. It's non-Olympic, it's competing with the IOC and the World Games Association. Um, they developed a multi-sport event uh, called World Urban Games. We don't know if it will take place. It's planned for 2017, which would somehow collide with the World Games, we will see. But most important, on Monday they announced they have a cooperation now with Eurovision. Eurovision, you know, uh, TV channel um, with a European focus but with correspondents all around the world. From January 2015 on there will be uh, Sports United. Uh, it's a sports broadcast once per week and it is supposed to be uh, feeded by the member organizations of Sport Accord. And in the trailer that they showed in, on Monday in Lausanne you could see three air sports uh, in there and people recognized that and asked us how did you get the air sports in there? Well, we got it in there because we continuously work on providing the materials to the different platforms. So this is really the stars kind of aligned in the right uh, order, so we, we should really work on that. And finally, uh, just a, sh a short view, next one please. The, the, uh, we had a, a summer party where we invited, invited all the international federations and representatives in Lausanne. We are all competing for the same market. As I said, with a circle that you saw. Everyone wants to have sponsors and spectators and media coverage, but so there is competition going on and we need to be more visible in this uh, uh, area as well. And maybe, as a side remark, uh, maybe it's not one airspot that will be the key event that brings us to the next level. It will very probably be some airspots together bringing us to the next level could be the World Air Games as the flagship event at the end of next year, hopefully. So we will have some people coming there who are interested in hosting the World Air Games uh, four years later. Uh, it, and it will be a combination of competition and entertainment. Um, you, know, you all know the glider aerobatics and powered aerobatics events. Um, you need something to fill the time gaps that there might be in between. So the people who are there on the ground as spectators they see the aerobatics competition, but they also see something different. And even the Red Bull Air Race, they consider what do we do when we have our rounds of qualification and in between there is a break because one of the pilots has to be reconstructed and so on. What sort of other airport can we include in the program so it's even more entertaining for the spectators? So maybe that's the solution, saying we combine different airports and then we can really go on the next step towards a sustainable growth of FAI and of our activities. Finally, the, the next slide, general conference. Um, I would really like to point out, because this is something that needs your involvement, each of you as the delegates, there were um, discussions on the spotting code general section. Um, CASI, the commission that's uh, working on the general section of the spotting code, adapted or adopted some changes for the um, sporting court did come into effect uh, from the beginning of next year. Uh, one, of his, one of it is related to the database implementation for the sporting licenses. But uh, what I would like to point out, there is a major rewrite of the section, general section, to come into effect from 2016. Um, you, you will need to adapt your own sporting court to that. And uh, I would just like to mention some changes that uh, you are asked uh, to find your own solution. For example, the general section of the sporting court defined ten, the first 10 placed in a CAT 1 event should receive diplomas. This is now open. You can decide if only the th first three ones receive a diploma, if all receive a diploma, if it's the first 20 ones, the first 15 ones. You need to take care of that and define that in the future. Then on the Disqualification. There was a uh, regulation, the disqualification is done by the event director during a competition. This is now changed. The Air Sport Commission will determine the grounds for disqualification that lead to the surrender of a sporting license. So you need to decide how do you want to do that? What is the ground for disqualification? And the third aspect is on entry fees. And you remember I showed you this overview over the different practices of the commissions. 
so far it was clear if someone is leading a competition and has paid the entry fees, he will not get a reimbursement on that. This is now supposed to change. If you want to have a partial reimbursement or total reimbursement, you can decide on how to practice that. And what I really strongly urge and would like to ask you, if you work on your own sporting court to change these regulations for the competitions, please take our advice from the head office as well, because we want to have it efficient and we want to have it doable. And it might come up in a discussion that you think this is the best solution, but please, we are there and maybe can give you some other perspective on it. So that's what I just want to ask you. Uh, don't confront us with a finished, changed sporting code, uh, but in the process of discussing, don't mind if we get ourselves involved and uh, give our comments to that as well. To be honest, I'm not happy about what has happened with the general section of the sporting code. Um, if you look at it in detail, uh, maybe you, you come to the same conclusion. A short word on anti-doping. I don't know if uh, that has been uh, did, um, reached all of you. Uh, there will be no registered testing pool next year. Um, there will be in-competition testing and there will be a testing for so-called elite performers, which is normally defined, for example, as world championship or continental championship participants, but also record uh, pilots. So that's a change. I think in aerobatics maybe not uh, so relevant, but in the other air sports definitely. So that's my, my overview. Um, uh, just uh, for your information, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. There was lots of discussions in the past about strategy and uh, where to go and what to do. So this is just an overview. Um, we are really working on this basis. And if you show the next slide, this is the um, analysis from the 100 and Six general conference, no, that's from, I think, two, I don't know, four or five years ago. I think this is still valid as a strategic goal. So we want to strengthen the organization, unite our members. We want to service all FAI bodies, including the Aerobatics Commission, and we want to promote all our airsports. So in the end, more visibility for airsports. Thank you very much. Okay, good morning everybody. Thank you, Susanne, for the uh, uh, very many messages. Um, I'd like to add with some more uh, details on our daily work. And uh, if I know correctly, we've got 15 minutes now. I got a couple of presentations, actually, one specifically at the World Air Games, which you need to tell me I'm not doing it now, but I can do it any time during the conference when you think it's good. So I will start with some remarks on the marketing and communication and then we'll continue to talk about support that we from Lausanne want to put in place for 2.15. Before we start with that, that's a nice picture I came across the other day. Um, and uh, for those of you living in Asia, this is not a surprise. For me living in Europe, this is a surprise. And it will definitely show how things are changing in, in the next years. So there are more people living inside this circle than outside. That's a fact. And every growth impact which we're faced with, almost every growth impact, comes from that area. So clearly we are a very Eurocentric uh, organization for the time being, but we must be aware that things are changing. So let me talk a little bit about marketing and communication. Okay. So, um, as, as mentioned before, there's a new post, which is me, uh, and the job is called Marketing and, <coughs> and Communication, um, and as, as well as Sports and Marketing Director, so we really want to put marketing a little bit more into the focus, uh, because what I said yesterday already in the Bureau, it was quite a strong statement, I think uh, I frightened some people uh, explaining some kind of uh, unhappiness about how events are today marketed. They are very well managed from a sporting point of view, but uh, I have been to events this year where there was no anthem, where there was no press release, where there was communication in a local language, where there have been pilots standing in front of locked doors for the award ceremony, uh, where uh, there was no website in place or a static website for four pages. That's all what we have seen today and we have this year, and we have not seen it once, we have seen it I would say in minimum one third of the events. 
So marketing, what we do, is key to our success. And we, we should try to talk a little bit more to the outside world. I mean, everybody in the room is convinced there's no message I have to tell you. You know perfectly well what we have to do. But we need to talk outside of the FAI. As I mentioned, our meeting with the IOC coming next week. And we need to share the joy. We need to share what we do. And also, we got to connect the stakeholders in FAI. So this is a monoculture meeting. You're focusing on aerobatics, which is such a wonderful sport. And someday, hopefully, I will be in one of your cockpits, which I haven't done yet. Let's start slowly and easy, please. I'm a slow-flying balloon pilot. Um, but uh, uh, we need to talk to each other much more across the airsports because there's so much we can share where we can benefit from each other. And uh, don't take this, it's, uh, the intention is that you get confused um, because when you start looking into the people who might be our customers outside, it gets out of control. There's really many and actually too many. So if we go back to our constitution, FAI primarily has three tasks. We, we need to promote air sports, of course. Uh, we need to ratify records, and we need to coordinate and, and help running international events. So that's the guiding principle. Um, but we have obviously different stakeholders, even within these three core goals, which are members with their specific demands. We have FAI bodies like you, like the executive board, like the bureaus. Uh, we have uh, partners, Brightling, Red Bull, and others we want to attract, and we have outside the FAI, the big group of media about all kinds of people uh, who are interested. And they want to be entertained, they want to be informed, they want to, be, they want to benefit, they want to help. So that all needs to be covered, and you saw that before. Um, there's some goals, but this is theory. So later on, I will try to explain what Susanne and I have been working on and presenting to the executive board and presenting to the general conference with details. Um, okay, 215 we think really is a special year. Uh, basically uh, because we have some upcoming very good events. Events with a strong potential and even better events which are funded sufficiently uh, by our partners. One event has been mentioned already a couple of times the World Air Games in Dubai, and uh, we'll talk about that in a separate presentation. So as Suzanne pointed it right, we are the stars are right aligned. And I want to just briefly highlight some points which are now after the General Conference covered by specific budget positions. So we want to make the World Air Games a success, obviously. Uh, we want to focus on some key events with some uh, selected and dedicated support from Suzanne, including our partner Breitling. And obviously your event is, is on the top end, on the higher end of the list. Dubnica was certainly the best event last year, uh, if I may say so, related to Brightling coverage. Um, and uh, there were others which really definitely have room for improvement. So we will continue doing this, focusing on specific events. So Sailplane Grand Prix won the, the World Air Game, the, the, the um, World um, Aerobatic Championship in France is one at the bottom end. Um, and we want to professionalize FAR Cup 1 events. And for that, we will invite organizers to seminars to Lausanne, not in a, in a school way of setup like this youth thing. We want, uh, we want to work, we want to exchange, we want to network, we want to connect the airspots together with the help of the head office and also with the help of our partners. So both partners, Brighton and Red Bull, volunteered to send uh, marketing people to our events. They're just waiting for this opportunity and they're more than happy uh, to help us understand the business perspective. So you may take many of my messages from a business perspective. I don't have to tell you anything about your sport. That's run very well. But the success is happening outside. Um, and of course, we want to be present more outside our core uh, aviation uh, community. Um, talking about FAI, our products, our long-term goal is number three, which is an air sport congress. Um, Suzanne and I travel a lot through the world, which is nice on the one hand side. We have good opportunities to meet only on a face-to-face -face level, but that's actually happening in total 20 times a year, um, which is nice. But we think there's a benefit in the midterm uh, to start developing the concept of an air sport congress. Something like an air sport commission general conference maybe every three years 
where all the commissions meet over a week or so, where we have dedicated commission-specific meetings, but also shared workshops where we can give you professional input and link the airports together. So that's the, the goal we are working on, and, and we hopefully have first initial steps next year, building up to some bigger things in three years' time. And also we think once we come in, in a city with a thousand pilots, or 1,500 pilots, maybe um, we will become attractive for cities, for partners, for airlines, and all kinds of stuff. And we are really looking into this kind of thing in the midterm. Um, the general public is interested in what we do, and we can see that when we provide tracking on our internet pages. Gordon Bennett is a good example in, way, in the way of showing the technology of uh, getting the data, but it's also a bad example in the way it's communicated and marketed outside. Uh, the Sailplane Grand Prix has some live tracking uh, devices and other sports as well. So we have, uh, as mentioned by Susan, um, a working group looking specifically into making data available on the screen, maybe in the, in the form of daily recaps or maybe in the form of live sessions with a commentary box and all this kind of stuff. We look into FAI mobile apps, uh, something like a survival box for event organizers, delegates, and so when you today go to FAI.org, our website is not responsive, it's not really a helping tool, it's good. When you know what you are searching for and when you have a desktop, but it's bad when you are traveling and have a cell phone device. And we have some, uh, some beta solutions already in place, which I'm showing you in a minute. Um, and all the other stuff you can read by yourself. I don't want to bore you with too many words on that, but uh, uh, all the elements like young artist contest um, and, and VIP hospitality packages, there are things where we can really put solutions in place with your help. Media cover coverage is, is a very important thing. We want to take the uh, World Air Games specifically um, as a tool to buy professionally produced content. We did this already this year. Uh, by sending a team to Vichy to cover two world championships, and we will continue to do that next year, um, so that we have pictures and stories and images, and we want to increase our uh, presence in the social media as well. Uh, this all is really only possible with money, so we need to be careful how to spend the money, because we can spend it only once, but definitely we lack images and we lack professional material when we talk to the world. And it's really a pity that most events don't even show pictures after they are over. Uh, it is, it's, there's no automatic loop and nobody really feels committed in sharing the images with us, with the commissions after an event. We always search images and that's actually something which shouldn't happen. Um, we started already uh, issuing our press releases in different languages. So from now on, all the major communication from the head office is coming in six languages. Uh, which ease uh, the way that journalists then write about us. Um, so that's just some minor stuff, but it's adding to the whole thing. Um, this is just a list in Excel, it's better. Uh, we are looking into having regular information, taking the history, the legacy of, of FAI and our record holders into consideration and, and writing newsletters related to specific dates. Now this year there wasn't, or 15, there haven't been many um, records because of uh, 25 years, 50 years, 75 years, first world war, second world war, and all that stuff, so there wasn't many records flown. Um, but uh, that, that will change in the next year, so we want to more actively look into records to tell these to the world. And finally, this all should result into new business, obviously, uh, but that's not going too far, but uh, uh, there is no new business as long as we don't talk about our, our events, our joy, our fun, our competition in a professional way. Um, last night I had already the question of fame. Uh, you were very close to that. Fame has been, um, I should say, a failure in the way that uh, FAI put money behind it with the big expectations. Um, for various reasons that didn't work out. Um, the companies will not be closed. They have Sleeping, Fame and Alpita, by the way, two companies owned 100% by FAI. Because we clearly need companies in the future to do business on behalf of the commissions and on behalf of FAI. We need to outsource activities, uh, not only from a commercial point of view, but also from a protective 
point of view. Uh, there may be business occasions where we want to protect FAI or for tax reasons or whatever, we want to keep business apart from the core FAI area. So the companies are kind of sleeping, they are dormant companies, but we will certainly need them in the future. Just to add a little bit on the private partnership, um, some of you, of course, are right in saying, well, there is money, uh, but what's actually changing in an event? That's true, we never have enough money, but it's a good and strong message. And because the money is by no way enough to please all the airports, um, the decision had been taken to focus on few events, and you are one of those having one of the sexy events uh, which are really appealing to the public. So uh, there are actually more commissions uh, who don't benefit from this deal, but you are one of the commission who benefit. Um, and that's also a message in itself. So this year we had these four events covered. Dubnica was one of them, but also in Vichy two events and the uh, Sailplane Grand Prix in Sistema in France. And um, we uh, will continue to support that, but we will also increase uh, our support by um, by assisting the local organizers. And the first step is inviting the organizers and the NUCs of the selected driving events for 2015 to Lausanne in January, where we will talk <coughs> about the tools we have, where we will talk about um, protocols, where we will exchange, where we will listen to the event concepts and where we want to provide a platform that uh, organizers and the commissions and the NUCs can really exchange um, the way they run the events. And we want to connect previous organizers with future organizers. So that's the first seminar happening in January, but we will open up this format and at least run one more event in 2015. And I think there's a big benefit to run this three or four times a year, maybe alongside commission meetings. Because what we also see is that the, the, the number of bids being presented is declining. Uh, and the result is that more and more commissions accept bad bids just to have an event. So we know about too many events actually which have the potential for trouble already just because there was no other choice. And so we need to find ways how, to, how we motivate cities, clubs, companies, or whoever likes air sport to put on the table good bids. And I think the thing really begins in the initial phase when people are attracted to us and that we then take them and guide them through the process so that they make the event. So that's clearly something picking up already in January. And again, uh, because this sounds so big and 15 minutes are over, uh, we have three, game, three aims. Um, that's the key in the filter, so we can't please everybody, but at least it's a good start. And the good thing is, we don't have to invent our uh, product, if I may say so, because uh, it's such a nice product already in place. Aviation is a beautiful joy and fun. Uh, we all share that. It's a highly emotional, highly technical, highly skilled um, uh, thing which we all so much like to do. Uh, and it's not difficult to tell the message. Everybody likes to listen to a pilot. Everybody uh, sees when our eyes smile when we talk about our last flight. It's really kind of easy. Um, but the tools around, that's something we really need to focus on and that's what's really uh, the prime focus from now on. And uh, I have more to tell you in the breaks, LG tells me, but that's just the initial thing on marketing and communication for next year. Thank you very much.